it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card recreating one of my favorite childhood stories, Peter Rabbit. And I'll be using Lawn Fawn's Some Bunny, Happy Harvest, A Bug Deal, Our Friendship Grows, and Critters on the Farm. I've stamped my images out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock. But before I get to my Copic coloring, I need to alter these images. Um, first of all, I need to alter the little bunny. I wanted to give him a jacket that looks like Peter's jacket in the story. So I'm taking a pencil and just kind of sketching in those lines, giving him some little sleeves, and also sketching in the two sides of the jacket and some buttons. And once I'm happy with the sketch, I will take a Tombow Memento marker and I'm going to go over those lines and make sure that I thicken them up to the same thickness of the stamped images. So just by itself, it's not quite thick enough. So I have to go over it a couple of times and match that to the rest of the thickness so that it really looks seamless as if it was always on him. So I'm gonna do that for the two sides and then I'll go over the little buttons. Those were important because as we know, he got caught by his buttons in the fence of Mr. McGregor's garden and he had to wriggle out of his nice jacket to escape. Uh, he also lost his shoes, so I went ahead and gave him some shoes and Mr. McGregor ended up stringing those up as a scarecrow. I also altered the watering can to look like the one from the story that Peter tried to hide inside, but then he ended up sneezing. And uh, so I'm going to erase my pencil lines with a white eraser, and now I'm ready to Copic color. So I'm going to start with Peter since he's the main image, and I'm going to color him with E40, E41, and E42. Starting with my E40 and trying to map out his particular coloring, he is a little brown bunny, but he's got a little bit of white on his chin and also on his belly. So what I did was pull up a picture of Peter on my phone so that I could kind of match my coloring to the illustration from Beatrix Potter. So once I have my colors laid in, I'm gonna to start to darken that up. I'm coming in now with the E41 and adding a bit more shading and also adding some shading on his arms and legs and around his belly area. And then I'm going to deepen that up even further with the E42 and um, just kind of build up until I get to a similar tone to the illustration. So I'm taking that E42 up his ears and also around the sides of his belly, coloring in his little feet. And um, then I'll go back with my E41 and start to blend that out and just smooth everything until uh, it looks a little bit more soft and fluffy. Now that I have his coloring mapped out, I wanted to darken him up a bit. So I pulled in the E43 and I'm going to add some shadows with that, putting a little shadow above his nose area to help that look a little more pronounced and also on his hands and feet. And then I'm gonna blend out with the E42 and then I'll go back to my E41 for my lightest on those areas. And then um, when I want to transition his brown part of his belly into the white, that's when I'll pull in that E40 and kind of make that uh, transition nice and smooth. I'm also gonna add a little E40 to the insides of his ears just so they have a little bit of a undertone there. And then I'm moving on to his jacket. And the closest I could come up with to what I have in my Copic collection to match his little jacket is B41, B52, and B45. So I laid in some shadows on his sides and under his arms with that B45 as my darkest. And then I'm starting to blend that out with the B52. And then I'll come in with my B41 for the lightest and add a little bit of a highlight there. 
and then I'm going to use Y26 for the buttons. His shoes are little black shoes, so I used W7 for those. I left a little bit of white space on the ends after blending out with the W5 um, because they're in the picture, but I eventually covered them up because that was the only place that I had anything white. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is color in the little bird from Happy Harvest. This is supposed to be a crow, but I'm turning it into a robin because there is a photo of Peter in the garden kind of eating carrots and there's a crow standing next to him uh, watching him and the colors I chose for the red parts of the crow or the breast of the crow was YR02, YR04, and R24. There's a lot of deep reds uh, in this illustration if you go back to the actual children's book um, even the carrots look very red so I'm trying to mimic that so the colors I'm using for those are YR04, R24, and R29 and I know they may look a little bit silly right now but once I get the origin there I think it works and like I said I was trying to match the children's book which I will show you the reference photo that I was using here in a little bit and you'll be able to see just how deep of a red they are. They actually don't have any orange tone in them but I just thought they probably wouldn't look realistic to the viewer if they didn't have some orange in there so I kind of did a two-tone look to kind of uh, do my own interpretation on the illustration. I also made sure to alternate which side I put the shading on for those carrots just so I could lay them down in different ways and have the shading be on the bottom. So then I'm moving on to finishing off my robin. I used E40 to transition from the red breast into the white belly and then I'm using E44 and E47 for the brown parts. So I added some E47 to the top of the head and the tops of the wings and I'm blending down with the E44 and then I needed a third shade in there that the E40 was too far away. So I added the E43 and then I went back in with a little of that E40 to blend the transition on the head. I added a bit more on the belly as well. I'm also going to color in the pile of dirt with those darkest three shades. So I'm using the E47 to add a little bit of depth to those artist drawn lines, those little scallops and details. And then I'm going to use my E44 to blend that out, bring that toward the center. And then I'll fill in any white space with the E43. I'm going to take away the E47 and add in the E41 and E42. And I'm going to color in the little fence, which is going to be the gate in this little scene here. Um, that's the gate that he was trying to e escape from Mr. McGregor's garden through. So I'm using E44 for the darkest and I'm just putting a little shadow on the right hand side of each of those pickets and then also on the bottom of the slats that are running horizontally uh, across the back. And then I'm going to come down with the E43 and start to blend that out just by doing a little line that overlaps the very edge of the E44. And then I'm going to repeat that with the E42. So I'm going to have four shades in there just to make it look extra um, like wood grain and all of that have a lot of depth. I just used the darkest three for the slats in the back, but I made sure to save a little room for that E41 on the pickets. For the carrot tops, I'm going to use G61, G63, and G67. I started with that G67 and added a little bit of darkness there. I wasn't really sure how to do the light source on that top part. It took me a little bit to kind of figure out what I wanted to do, but I eventually added in like a little line on each of those little sections and uh, doing something similar to the wood slats, just having a little bit of space for those other two shades. So I'll come in with the uh, lighter shades and just add a little bit of that into each one of 
those top scallops and try to create a little bit of depth there by having those lights and darks. So the watering can was a little bit tricky to match to the watercolor illustration. It had this really vintage looking aqua tone um, that was kind of really hard to capture. So I started with G quadruple zero, G zero zero, and G O two, and blended from the outside edges toward the center. And then I'm going to come in with some darker tones, the BG70 and also the BG72 and kind of add a little bit of uh, lines on the outside edge, some little uh, streakiness. And it really did come pretty close to matching the color that you'll see on the illustration. And then I just blended right over that again with the BG70. So now I'm ready to color in the little spade. So I'm going to use C0, C1, and C3 for the metal part of that. Again, I'm just putting my shading on the right hand side and blending toward the left. And I did go back in with that C3 and add a bit more of that and blend that out um, just for a little bit extra depth. And then I'm going to use some warm grays for the handle because I wanted the handle to look plastic and not, you know, metallic like the bottom part. So I switched it up by using the warm grays and I'll also use the W5 and W7 to color in the uh, Robin's beak. And I just went ahead and finished off Peter's shoes. I use Y15 to do the little band on the spade and then I'm moving on to some of my leaves. I'm using YG21, YG23, and YG25 for the largest three leaves. And I added that YG25 up the center, kind of accentuating that center line there. And then I'm blending toward the edges with the YG23, and then the YG21, which is gonna give it that bright yellow, kind of chartreuse new leaf look. So I'm just gonna repeat that for the other two leaves. These are all from a bug deal. I decided to go ahead and add the one that had the bite taken out of it, just because uh, it's very likely that Peter would have been tasting the leaves as well. I'm imagining that there may be the outer leaves of a cabbage or something like that. Um, Peter was kind of wreaking havoc there in Mr. McGregor's garden, so I thought it would be fun to have the bite taken out of it just to kind of fit in with the story. So I'll finish off this last large leaf with this combo, and then I'm going to switch it up for the four small leaves, and those are from Our Friendship Grows, and I just stamped them twice. And I'm using YG00, YG01, and YG03 for those. I just wanted something that was slightly different, but very much in keeping with the outer leaves because I wanted them to look like they were possibly from the same plant. So once I'm finished, I will pull up the reference image that I was using to do my coloring. And there you can see that. And now I will trim these images out with their matching dies. For my focal panel, I cut down three pieces of cardstock. I use Mermaid with the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackables for the sky, Cilantro with the grassy borders for the grass, and Ground Coffee with the stitched simple hillside borders for the garden. So I'm gonna pop the Mermaid piece into my Misty and stamp a sentiment using Lawn Fawn Peacock Ink. And I'm using the sentiment that says, I care it about you, which is from somebody. Then I'll pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Speckled Eggshell cardstock and some pumpkin spice ink because I wanted to stamp the little terracotta pot and another bunny and a little flower and um, my sentiment was supposed to say friends are flowers that never fade, but I didn't realize that the friends was a different part. So um, I realized that right now. So I decided to just put the word friends up above the pot. So I just picked that up again and I'm going to ink that up and stamp that down a couple of times so that the uh, ink color matches with the rest. But I thought that was fun since um, that's also part of the story there. 
So now I'm going to take my little dirt for my garden and add some liquid glue to the back of that and adhere my grass right above that. So that can be the grass that is just bordering the edge of the garden. So I'm going to get that on there just how I want it and then I will glue that down to my piece of mermaid cardstock so that that can be my sky. And I didn't wait long enough for the grassy border to adhere to the dirt, so I just had to readjust that uh, while that glue was still wet, and I was able to fix that. And just make sure that everything was lined up nice and straight on there. Then I'm going to grab some pattern paper from the Perfectly Plaid Remix 6x6, and I decided to go with this blue and white gingham. My nephew used to have a Peter Rabbit nursery and it had a lot of blue and white gingham, so I thought this was perfect. So I trimmed that down with the largest of the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackables, and then I'm going to adhere that to my card front and just make sure again that those edges are on there nice and straight since that covers the entire card front. I also added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel, so I'm going to peel off those release papers and center that on my card and then press that down into place. And now I can bring in my images and kind of figure out how I want to arrange everything. I'm going to start with Peter since he is the main image here, so I want to make sure that I get him just where I want him and then I'm going to build my scene around him. I'm going to add the one of the carrots to his hand and I'm going to do it with the bottom part up just as it is in the children's book illustration. And then I'll take that little fence that is going to be the gate and I'm going to put that up at the top of the garden uh, so that you can see, you know, kind of the woodland area behind there that he needs to escape back into to get back to his family. I added the watering can over on the right hand side and then I'm going to put the patch of dirt that's kind of uh, dug up down below and I can add a couple of carrots down at the bottom where Peter has kind of been pulling them up and uh, having his little snack there. So I added one uh, going each way and put the shadow down at the bottom for those. And then the other two carrots I'm going to tuck into the pile of dirt. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do both of them at, at first, so I kind of was figuring out where I wanted this little spade to go before I decided, but I decided to put that down at the bottom of the dirt pile as if he had just recently been digging those up. And so I did end up tucking the extra carrot into that dirt pile as well. In the original illustration, the robin's actually standing on the top of a shovel handle uh, that's poking out of the ground, but I didn't have a shovel handle in my lawn fawn images, so I decided to place him on the watering can since that is also an iconic image from the story. And then I'm going to kind of fill in the rest of the space around the garden with these leaves so that you don't see that the rest of the fence is missing and also so it just looks more filled in. Uh, the drawing has lots of leafy green foliage in the back of Peter and the Robin, so I wanted to kind of mimic that as well um, just by tucking those leaves here and there and just making it look like there are more plants growing. You know, it's not just like a bare patch with just a couple of carrots in it. I wanted it to look nice and full, but I just didn't have any other vegetable images. So I thought that the leaves would kind of do the trick and kind of fill in that for your mind. You know, when you see them, you kind of get the idea that there are more vegetables growing there. So I just played with the placement of those last few leaves until I was happy with them and until the scene looked nice and full like I mentioned. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of extra embellishment. I always love adding a bit of uh, stardust stickles to my cards when I can. So I decided to add some to each of the carrots and just give them a little extra shimmer on there. So I did that for those and then um, I also added a little bit to the insides of Peter's ears and to the buttons on his jacket. 
And I made myself stop there. I didn't want to get too carried away, but there is an up close look at all of that detail and the sparkle and shine when you tip it into the light. And of course, another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Peter Rabbit is actually the only book that I still own from my childhood. So it's a really special one to me and I really hope you guys liked it. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.